My friend Tina Huang actually gave me the idea for this video. We're recently talking about how we've dealt with the many discouraging feelings that come with the data science domain. There's that overwhelmed feeling that you get when you think about how big the field is and how much material there is to learn. There are feelings of inadequacy when you see your peers working on awesome projects. There's also that hopeless feeling when you've sent out 20 job applications and you still haven't gotten a response yet. You can also feel confusion, frustration, and anxiety. I put out this poll on my YouTube channel, and these are the results of what most of you are feeling. Everyone feels discouraged at some point, even me. While I definitely haven't perfected it, these are some of the ways that I deal with the different discouraging feelings that I get. At the end, I'll also give some insight into how I'm able to avoid these discouraged feelings in the first place as much as possible. I'd also like you to take this video with a grain of salt. I am by no means a psychologist or professional when dealing with these negative emotions and feelings. So just these are things that I've picked up along the way and things that I've experienced. The first course of action that you should do is to determine why you're feeling discouraged. Are you feeling overwhelmed, helpless, inadequate, frustrated, confused, or anxious? A mix of all of these. These are generally the more specific discouraged feelings that I've come across. The more specific you can get with how you're feeling, the better. I find that the way that you deal with each of these individual feelings can be a little bit different. So it's really important to assess how you feel before you take action. Let's start with the less common ones and then work our way up to the leading causes of discouragement. So anxiety, confusion, and frustration are all things that we feel most likely in the moment. In most cases, they're passing. Because of this nature, I have a different way of dealing with these than the high level feelings of overwhelm and inadequacy. I personally find that these types of discouragement manifest in my body. I feel tense, I get headaches, I feel exhausted. I also get this awful feeling like I have a ton of stuff to do and nothing to do at the same time. It is maddening. I found that the best way to combat these sensations is to make a physical change. Something even as simple as switching work locations or standing up to work rather than sitting down can make a big difference. The biggest differentiators though, i found are going for a walk, stretching, meditating, exercise, or any full body phenomenon that gets me out of my own head. I also find that stepping away from technology for at least 10 minutes snaps me out of most brain fog. Diving into Instagram when frustrated has literally never in my life helped ease any of these feelings. I'm a fan of Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. In the book, he talks about how free time spent on electronics actually wears us down just as much as the real work we were doing. You don't wanna take rest breaks that actually tax your mind just as much as the work you were doing. Our brain also does a lot of processing while we're seemingly doing nothing. Historically, humans have had a lot of downtime before the advent of technology, and the art of just sitting there and thinking or letting your mind wander is somewhat lost. But some would argue that it's extremely important for problem resolution. I find that when I go for a walk, when I meditate, or when I take a nap, Sometimes the solutions just pop into my head. The last approach that I use to tackle these three feelings is to switch the problem that I'm working on. Again, many of these causes of discouragement are caused by a specific problem at hand. Finding success in a different area within the data science domain could also help ease these feelings. Next, let's tackle the overwhelmed feelings that can lead to hopelessness. The ways to combat these two are very similar, so I wanted to group them together. And we often get this hopeless feeling after being overwhelmed by how large the data science field is. The first thing I want to say about this is that while data science is large, there are very few people, if any, that can understand the entire domain. I certainly don't. Data science is an art of learning what you need to solve specific problems. Learning more is good, but trying to learn everything would overwhelm anyone. The simple answer is don't try to learn everything. Focus on problems first and try your best to solve those. As you solve more problems, you learn as you go and you'll pick up more and more skills. More importantly, you'll learn how to pick up concepts and tools on the fly, which is by far the most important skill that you can develop within this field. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of the way, here are some concrete steps you can take to get over these feelings of overwhelm and hopelessness. First, you can break your work into smaller chunks. For example, when I'm learning a new algorithm, I find that there are a couple different steps that I can break this algorithmic learning process into. I usually start with implementing the algorithm with a toy example. Then I try to understand some of the math behind it, usually by watching YouTube videos. StatQuest is great for this. Next, I look into the documentation for the algorithm on sklearn, and I look at the different parameters associated with it. Finally, I try using this algorithm on real data. If I do each of these steps independently, they aren't very difficult. But if I approach this whole problem of learning a new algorithm, it sounds pretty scary even to me. 
Honestly, I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but projects are an incredible way to narrow the scope of what you're learning. Projects give you a very clear objective as well. You're trying to solve a specific problem rather than just learning. Projects also give you immediate feedback on areas where you're lacking. You can quickly iterate on your weaknesses and improve. Outside of that, something that has helped me greatly has been listening to other people's journeys. I found that almost everyone was as scared and overwhelmed as I was. In each episode of my podcast, I've learned how different people have overcome the challenges associated with learning or breaking into the profession. You don't have to listen to my podcast, but you should try and find a place where you can hear how other people have approached the same challenges you're facing. Of course, you can listen to my podcast, you know. The last thing I'd recommend is finding a structured course of study. You can either build this yourself or go through an online course. As it so happens, this video is sponsored by 365 Data Science, a company that I believe has a very well-structured offering for learning data science. I've personally made a course with them about how to start a career in data science, and the platform defines a very clear path from learning the very basics of data science all the way to interviewing for the job. My friend Tina Huang also released a course with them on how to tackle the SQL portion of the data science interview. I highly recommend checking that out as well. You can get 57% off of an annual membership with my link below. So the last and most common feeling that you're likely facing is inadequacy. This is so common that I've actually made an entire video detailing my experience with it. I've linked that video above and below for even more details on how to deal with this inadequacy, otherwise known as imposter syndrome. This feeling often comes from seeing all the cool work that other people are doing. You start thinking, how could I possibly do something like that myself? The truth is that as you are now, you likely won't do something like what you're seeing anytime soon. On the other hand, you're capable of achieving that and much more over time. You're seeing the results of what other people are doing, but you're not seeing the hard work that they put in to get to where they are. Something that's been integral for me personally dealing with inadequacy is the development of a growth mindset. Realizing that right now I might not be able to accomplish something, but I'm capable of improving, learning, growing, and expanding my capabilities over time. Time is also really important here. People often overestimate what they can do in a short period of time, say a week or a couple months, but they underestimate what they can do in a year or two. Start evaluating your progress over longer time horizons and you'll feel a lot better about yourself. Now to that point, how are you tracking your progress? This is a big part of my 66 days of data initiative. If you're tracking how far you've come and what you've learned and the projects that you've done, this serves as a constant reminder that you're capable of learning, growing, and improving. And you might look back and say, hey, I've done some pretty cool stuff. Strangely enough, I would also look at the data to ease this feeling of inadequacy. You're likely at the beginning of your story. What realistic protagonist knows everything from the start? Don't compare yourself to people who've been doing this for years. Maybe compare yourself to your peers who put in a similar amount of time to yourself, but better yet, just look at what you've personally accomplished and don't worry about the other people. If you did want to compare yourself to others though, use it in a positive way. I find this particularly helpful in the job application process. You might be getting, for example, one interview request for every 20 applications you submit through a job board. You might think that you're a failure because of your perceived low rate, this 5% rate. In a video I just did with the co-founder of Sharpest Minds, his data suggests that through job boards, most applicants have about a one in 50 chance of getting a callback. The one in 20 that you are getting is actually more than two times higher than the average. You're actually doing really well, even though it's perceived like a failure. My last thought on imposter syndrome is that for most people, it never goes away. I, I definitely still have it. However, I've figured out how to reframe this inadequate feeling into an intense motivation to learn more and to prove myself. If you can, try to use this feeling to push yourself towards a positive direction. One of the best ways of dealing with discouragement is to put systems in place to eliminate it or to limit it from the very beginning of your journey. These are some of the precautions that you can take to shield yourself from the feelings before they even spring up. First, I recommend creating good habits around learning, finding others to hold you accountable, and joining a community. The 66 Days of Data initiative that I started is a great place to do all three of these things, and it's completely free. Next, I highly encourage you to collaborate with others on projects. Two heads are usually better than one, and sometimes you can learn even more when sharing the data science workload. Next, I build a structure around how you plan to learn this field. You'll need to get a kind of high level understanding of the domain, and then you can choose to build your own roadmap, or you can use a learning resource like 365 Data Science. There are absolutely plenty of free resources to do this. However, I did find when I was starting out that 
if I invested my hard-earned money in something, I was just a little bit more likely to stick with it. Finally, you should set some clear SMART goals. SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. Goals help you to narrow your focus, and implied goals are one of the reasons why projects can be so effective. I have a video on how I set my own personal goals, which I've linked above and below. This is a pretty heavy topic, and hopefully this video helps you to deal with some of these very real feelings. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck on your data science journey.